Hello everyone, welcome to the Ashley and Lancelot show. Uh, we are with um, Oscar G. Oscar G. He is a Army Ranger vet, and he is going. He has also started a nonprofit organization. And if you have a chance, the link will be in below for his um, YouTube channel, uh, Panda Pew. And we'll also have a lot of the, the news articles and a lot of the nonprofit uh, information in the bottom description as well. If any comments uh, between us, uh, please leave the comment below or check out our Facebook page and leave a comment there. And uh, we will. And if you like this uh, show and podcast, we'll do a lot more. And please subscribe, put a thumbs up, and leave a comment. And this is Oscar G. And um, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello. Uh, how you doing, everybody out there? Uh, my name is Oscar G. I am a medically retired Army Ranger, infantryman, all the good stuff. Um, I just talked, maybe we talk about some benefits and stuff today. I wasn't sure. So, so... It's okay, man. We will edit anything, so you take your time. All right, let's do that again. Uh, a second. No, 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 just to be, just that. No, keep it playing. Okay. Diego. Hi, my name is Oscar G. Uh, I am retired medically, United States Army. I was infantry and other stuff. Um, I broke my back. Well. Messed up four discs and four vertebrae at least. Um, I'm a veteran's advocate. I run a non-profit organization known as Code Pause. C-O-D-E-P-A-W-S. We'll list the link in connection to that. Code Pause is a service dog animal organization for veterans. Uh, we go out. We acquire certain dogs of the right demeanor from the, from the SPCA who keeps us well informed of dogs like, dogs like that. We rescue them, we, rescue them, we, train, them, we train them, and, and they, go to the they go to the veteran. We use some new, use some new unique, techniques unique techniques as far as, as, far the, as the training because we're incorporating, we're incorporating therapy into our sessions. Into our sessions. Therapy for the veteran. Therapy for the veteran. So it's a great, so thing, it's a great thing, thing that's going on here in Delaware. Like I said, check out my son's website, Panda Pew. On Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah, I know it's funny. Yeah, I know it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also have any uh, videos uh, recording of you with the uh, with the um, with the uh, the dog as well uh, that does the uh, session with the veteran? We do everything. We do everything. At this point, we have not posted anything on our website besides pictures and video of my service dog and uh, myself because we we have just become a non for profit. How? So. And how did this uh, help you in the long run and your activity in life with having a, a service animal with you at all times? You know, a service animal is you know, unique. It's, 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 not just it's not just there. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot of attention. A lot of, you have to do a whole lot of work when training these service because dogs. The because the owners are actually the trainers. People don't realize that. If the dog does not do what they say, What's the use? And what's the use? But service dogs are a lot of work. But service dogs are a lot of work and a big commitment. I and I learned that when I first got my service dog. And it, it changed me. And it, it changed me. It brought me to a better place. It, got it brought me, me to a better place. It got me out. It got me access. doing public access training. Walmart. You know, going to Walmart, stuff like that. It got me out to different you know, events. It got me out to different events. Making sure that but he was all right. making sure that he was all right, my partner, and he was making sure that I'm all right, and we did that security to each other. And of course, he does other things like seizures, diabetes, stuff like that. What do I? What can? Go ahead. Uh, what? Go ahead. Um, 
can I uh, be qualified to get myself a service animal with your organization? In order to give a service animal in our organization, we have limited the criteria so that we don't get overpacked with veterans and wild dogs out there and everything. Only what we can train a year. And as it looks right now, if we get the proper kenneling that we want, we'll be able to do three dogs, I mean, we'll be able to do eight dogs oh. quarterly. That's actually, what, it'll be 32 dogs a year. Yeah. That'll be a lot yeah. more. It's a large number. Yeah, it's a it's large number. It's a large number. number. So, so if you program, if you go, to, do if that, you program tries to do more than that, I've watched the program become so unsuccessful. That's a high number for service dogs. But we'll have the proper, we'll have the proper I remember I was with you with your first service animal, um, Pepper. Then we have the second one. I wasn't there for your second one, Chief. Uh, we'd like to meet Chief one day. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a high level of, a, a high okay. level uh, for 32 dogs. Uh, so how many uh, people in your organization are actually training dogs? Is it one person per person, or do they have a routine? How does it work to... A master trainer. No. A master tra we use a master trainer. We, we, we use a master trainer, and we use certain <clears throat> techniques that I don't want to... That's not, <laughs> that's not a problem, man. As long as you're helping out the community, helping out the vets yeah. that are in need, you don't have to really explain much about it. You just want to know, like, you know... You know what really qualifies them to get it, and how much it will actually impact it in their social life and their daily activity as well when they're out of the, the service. That's right. I was. Doing That's that. right. Yeah. I was telling you about that. Um, you qualify for our program. You must be a veteran from either the Gulf War forward. Basically, anybody who. I'm for, uh, basically anybody who played in the sand. Uh, yeah, we. I was stationed in Bagram. Uh, I, you were stationed at uh, which part? Um, I was Oscar? stationed places. Yeah. Well, you I can't, was you can't places. release a lot of the stuff until ten years after, and it's still top secret right now. Um, so we won't be asking any question about what happened in the Middle East. Or what we what we got back at all that will be decided after probably 10 20 years when they release the documents out then we probably will explain it but it's also emotional uh, emotional uh, 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 a thing for us as well at the same time right because who likes to share their business right because yeah. who likes to share their um, business nobody unless you're, I don't know Britney Spears unless you're, <laughs> I don't know Britney Spears <laughs> Emily Anderson. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yes, for for me, I'm trying to get a, a service animal. Uh, I found out that the VA only pays half of it, and there are grants out there that pays the other half of it uh, of the uh, service animal. Here in California, I talked to a couple of them here, but how's it work in Delaware over there? Delaware does not work that easy. It is Delaware does not work that easy. It is very hard to get service animals because of the dense population in this area. You have, uh, we're here in Delaware, so obviously us. And you have Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. I'm within 110 miles of D.C. I'm 110 miles from, from, um, from Philadelphia and 80 miles from Baltimore. There's just the dense population here. Is so, uh, there's just the dense population the here is that we can't do more dogs. You know, yeah. the reason that we can't we do more dogs. But we would love to help everybody. In order to qualify but for our program, you have in order to qualify for our program, you have to be a Iraqi war uh, operation Iraqi war for Desert Storm Operation Ford. Desert Storm forward and uh, you have to have a note from your doctor a, a real note anybody can get a doctor to write a note but it has 
you have to justify your reason. The problem with it is they're training dogs for everybody who do not need it. Having a service dog is having a prosthetic. It's there for you. You know, it's there for you. It's part of you in your everyday And it's part of you in your everyday things. It's it's not for just having and showing off and stuff like that. That's what makes it look bad. So then we have other qualifications like uh, suitability of residents. Yeah. Uh, how many other dogs? There's just so much to it. But once you go through a vigorous screening process, then we start into it. We are a non for profit. As we're setting up, I'm not going to release fees because we do not make money off this, unlike other programs. Yeah. The only person who gets paid in our program is a trainer. I know there's a lot of service, a nonprofit organization that actually, they say nonprofit, but they're not a more profit. Um, take uh, take our words that they only the trainer gets paid. Um, people only here are volunteers only. And uh, it just, so basically, we are actually here. And do uh, you have a donation page for the people to come by and donate, help to pay for a trainer and the and, uh, and the facility for the dog as well? Not yet, like I said, we just gained our, our nonprofit Not status. yet, like I said, so we just gained our, our nonprofit status. So what we are going to do is what we've done before, okay. get the person to set up okay. a GoFundMe account. For whatever amount that it costs us to train and for whatever amount that it costs us to train the dog. And I'm not going to throw any numbers out there, but it's not. Like, everybody says it is. It really isn't. And what you do is you get all your friends and everybody you know to donate $5 or something into the training of your dog. Go to businesses where you sponsor my dog. Because us doing this animal, we are training it for you. We're putting a lot of work and time into what we're doing. So... We want to know that you are definitely going to be committed to this animal. That's just what for the deposit. Because you and, have to uh, be committed. I believe that if I uh, did a GoFundMe page, I will make uh, a custom coin for your organization. And whoever donate the, the certain amount will get the custom coin for the Haas for Friend, Fry Oscar. I think that would be actually a good idea. What do you think, Oscar? Oh, yeah. Custom military coin? Idea. What's that? Oh, Custom yeah. Custom military That'd be a really coin good idea. organization so, that you can hand out for a donation, I believe. At least I can mm, have it. Challenge coins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it to your bar. Mm, challenge coins. Yeah, me too. I used to, I, I always lose them too. I have a lot of bars fun. as well. always had to pay for it. I know. Well, the problem is you guys in the airport well, the problem is, you guys in the well, airport just buy yours. I do. You what don't the know hell, what they man? Mean. I want to get the one no, for my know. own squadron. <laughs> <I'm playing. just laughs> um. All right. So, this. So, if you have any question, please subscribe and uh, leave a comment. And if you want, and uh, we will uh, probably do another podcast about this to answer more of your question uh, about service animal and the organization as well. We'll be moving on to one of our comments we had before in one of the videos of the benefits and the, and uh, and the, and, the dis, and and the disbenefits for the military. If you want to go in, you want to stay in, when you get out, what are your benefits, what do you get? So I have a few. Uh, I'm an Army. Oh, no, sorry. I'm a Air Force, and Oscar is Army, so we have pretty much two different um uh, views of the benefits and disbenefits of it uh i think we both have gi bills uh, that's is, that is a bonus so basically for gi bill is uh when you get out you have three years of fully paid school unless it's a state university there'll be a yellow ribbon and you pay the remainder in the end or you have your state pay the yellow ribbon and the remainder of your classes but the good thing that gi bill is if you want to get post 9/11, in my opinion, 
because of your base housing allowance, BAH, will be going by certain states of the colleges that you're going to. But if you go to McGovery, it goes to a cap of 22000 a month. And wherever your they don't wherever the GI Bill doesn't cover for your school will go into your twenty two hundred. The GI nine eleven just gives you every month what your base housing allowance of the city that you work, live in, where the college is at. That's one of the benefits that I'm using right now to go to school. What about you, Oscar? Benefits are very tricky. I am a benefits are very tricky. I am a Yes. Veterans Advocate in the local community, <laughs> Delaware. When you cause problems, uh, yes, people know me. Don't like you at the VA. What happens when you cause problems <laughs> and they don't like you at the VA? But I have some funny stories, but we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <clears throat> but I have some funny stories, but we'll talk about that later. Um, the Delaware actually is the largest. I mean. The fastest growing community for veterans in the country. People are migrating here because of all the benefits. They have housing. They just started a dental program where they're getting all the vets the dental you know attention they need. You know for abscesses and stuff that is really immediate. Immediate care stuff is getting taken care of. You know the program is is very unique and the doctors are very charitable by doing what they're doing and seeing the veterans but we don't want it to be overrun either you know charity only goes so far you know we don't want to infringe on any of their any of their services that they provide so you know we are the fastest growing we have so many different benefactors here in Delaware that live here. Okay, cut. Sorry. And um, we have so many. Okay, cut. So many different start. Benefits. We have so many. We have so many different benefits for veterans here in Delaware. The state provides. Um, The state provides uh, plenty of stuff, plenty of money. The Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs, their chairman, they they put out money for things that are needed in the community. Unfortunately, they have a bad rep right now, but we'll see what happens. Um, the foundation that I work with, which is the Delaware Veterans Awareness Center, and they're a non for profit here in Delaware. We are under them, but they are the primary. And they have the veteran stand down to make every veteran aware. That's the point of Every veteran in Delaware to be aware of every service that there is. That's the point of having a stand down and getting everybody to come out. And they offer stuff for service dogs. Like they get, uh, they get like $10 shots and stuff like that. They they have clothes out there, you know. They do a lot. They serve a big lunch. They have your local um, uh, your local congressman and everybody out there, politicians. So you really get to talk. You even get the general out there from the yeah, general of Delaware to come out and speak and listen to the community. We have the second largest. Uh, VFW in the country. It's here in uh, Ocean View, Delaware. It is my next to Bethany Beach. It is on the water. I had my I renewed my vows there a couple years ago, and uh, it's a really 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 nice place. I they really do a lot. If you have problems in the community. If your sink is broken and you can't afford to fix it, there's money for it. They built my house for me. It's a veteran's build. They did it through Habitat. But Habitat is just too messy. So what they did is they started their own Sussex, Sussex County Homes for Warriors.
it's under our foundation, same foundation. And what they do is they're going to build two houses a year for qualified veterans who meet the criteria. I don't know what the criteria is. Uh, you can hit me up on the Code Pause Facebook, and I can get that to you. You know, get involved, get into your community because Delaware offers so much. I absolutely. That's you know, get involved, get into your community because Delaware offers so much. Also, check out your state so, VA. Uh, if you every go state hungry, has their that's own your VA fault booklet for their state. Dollar. I have my California here right now. Uh, it's basically in your regular VA office. You also can find on the sites as well. Uh, a lot easier to find uh, all the benefits that you're qualified for. But the only way to get most of these qualifications is you need to get your D214 and process it into the VA Affairs Office. Then you again get your CMP done. And so they can start getting all your benefits, right? Uh, ASAP. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, if you're in the army, you should have what they call. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, if you're in the army, an army, you should have what they call a. Uh, they do. An army wounded warrior transition program, officer. Project. Or personnel and what they do they're the wounded warrior program not project they're liaisons prior service that make sure that you transition into the community the proper way that you have housing that you have everything this is for our veterans returning home our service members that have been injured and stuff for transition this is for them after, the, after that, it kicked me out. <laughs> I'm not joking. We, I, I had to, I had to use my mentor is a Vietnam War, uh, Vietnam War vet, and he's the one that actually helped me go to the Veterans Affair. Got my, I got my C, they you get your CMP done right away before you leave. So you have your percentage. So you gotta get that into the Veterans Affair so you can start getting paid. So it, it was, it was really a mess, in my opinion, for the Air Force because they give you a weak class like. That's great, and there's also a, um, a what do you call it, reservist, uh, uh, Air Force reservist, go try and go and recruit you to work at the base at home. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm broken, no. <laughs> so, uh, hey, yeah. Can we pause? Yeah. You don't actually have to pause, I'm just telling you. Hey, can we pause? You don't actually I know, have to pause. That's why you take. Me. That's why you know take as much break as you want, Oscar. This is basically a I podcast. can only go for so many you minutes can screw in my up head. As many as you want, can talk about anything as many as you want too. That's what a podcast basically is. Is any kind of current right. event? What did you think about? I know. You know that. Uh, I see you, Ashley. All right. She's doing her artwork. Uh, I got her a know brand that, new art uh, table too. I see Christmas. you, Ashley. When I already gave you a table, Ashley. Well, the, the, the slate? Yeah. The, they, they when broke. I already gave you a table, I got like Ashley. 200 bucks for, for it. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have a logo yet for you your know. nonprofit? Yes. Oh, that is so awesome. Very cool. Hold on. I think I may even have a, one of my cards in my pocket. Yes. It's very cool. Hold on. I think I may even have a one of my cards in my pocket that has the logo on it. And we'll get it set up on the thing. You know what I really yeah, thought do that. was we could Diego can cut this video and put yeah. it on our dog website. I mean, it'll be the same podcast that you do. Because it talks yeah. a whole lot about. We also what want to have both channels, that. so you guys will both have. Oh, both I mean, it'll be the same podcast that you get do. revenues out of it. So, yeah. Oh, this is, uh, it's kind of cool. A little footprint with the American flag. <laughs> Code. Yeah. I want to, I, I need to get, a, I was about to get a service animal as well. Yeah, I see it. I, uh, I, I'm trying to get myself a service animal over here. Um. It's been very difficult with the with it as well. well I end up getting it from you, though. <laughs> I'll trade it on for you. 
Yeah, that will be great. So I told yeah. you, told Henry it'd be before school summer school start, after summer I'll school start, we'll be there for a week or two. For you. So so we could do the uh, like face to face podcast uh, and see your organization and stuff like that. So yeah, and uh, also we can do some kind of skit as well. Uh, I'm trying to get, uh, but I'm also a, v, a VA advocate as well here in California for the Alliance Club. I help out. We're tr- trying to get. Uh, we got a lot of uh, a vet of uh, veteran homeless around here in California. A lot, especially a lot in the Bay Area, that we're trying to get them back into the housing. Our the police department is doing most of the job for it. Uh, we try to get their D two fourteen. So a lot of times they they don't have it. They lost it. Uh, because they're like back in Vietnam. Well, you know, we, uh, the homeless part in Delaware, they cleaned it up. We well, you know, homeless rates. Yeah. So many we, uh, they the homeless up. part they in Delaware, uh, they now. cleaned it up. We had yeah. one of the highest homeless rates. It puts them in There's so many veterans in Delaware. They yeah. Clean it up. They I use something to, called a hub dash. dash. It but is, they said my percentage is too high, so I make more money. Housing you had to make sixty percent or lower to get it, and only only take one third of your uh, of your of your disability money to pay for the rent. Yep. So yeah. Yep. Like, uh, cause I'm paying what sixteen hundred a month over here. And it's yearly. You have to yearly do that. Yep. Yeah. So. How does the I wouldn't do it. CMP reevaluation work? They're going to reevaluate maybe in a couple of years, that. or they're going to just leave it alone? They're not going to reevaluate. They're going to look at all your doctor's notes and ask for a current assessment. Uh huh. They're not going to reevaluate. They're going to look at all your doctor's okay. notes and ask for a current assessment. Uh-huh. And it's a process. And they'll review it. They'll tell you. And. You'll get their review in the mail, and it's a process, and it'll tell you when you get your response, Yeah, it will tell you what they put you at, what they're keeping you at, if they're going to make you permanent in total. Yeah, because I'm going to get PTSD in and caught in thinking in. I have the psychology though know, in Japan. You have the uh, possibility the of becoming paper. permanent in total. I uh, just got added in and get tested. I always will see a neurologist for my uh, cyst as well, my right frontal lobe of my brain too. It's really get bad that, bothering me. Get that done. Yeah. Get that done into the VA system. Yeah. Go to your VA records and enter that stuff. Yeah. Get that, I'll, get I'll that be right done. Back. I got to take a twinkle. Get that done oh, into the VA system. Take it done. Go to your VA records and enter that stuff. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to the Landslide Ashley Show slash Panda Pew. Uh, This is going to be the informal podcast part two. Uh, Part one is more formal. Uh, Please check it out. Uh, If you like the podcast, we'll do more. Subscribe, uh, put a thumbs up, leave a comment bottom. We have our both of our Facebook. A nonprofit organization and the website we're going to be talking about down in the description below. And uh, we are going to be talking about the VA uh, and the uh, and the, continuing on the benefits of the military as well. Um, and our experience and our point of view and what's out there. We talk more about the VA benefits that it's on the first part of the video. Please go uh, back and check that out uh, before we zoom in on to this video. So how are you doing, Oscar? I'm doing very well as well. Got my drink, please. Two cup, two cups of coffee for me, and I'm drinking my can of coke. <laughs> I'm on my third. I'm doing well. How you doing, Lance? Well, how big is the thermos? Cause I try to get the the big one I have. That's a small ass one. I I'm see on my minute. third I thermos. <laughs> I got the big, uh, the metal thermos one for school. <laughs> I need a big one because I'm at school for like eight in the morning till like eight thirty at night. So I got like a big ass one for me. Yeah, it's small because my head's not actually this big. It doesn't matter. I go to the bathroom all the time. 
no matter what, what I eat or drink, I still gotta use the right. We still gotta use the restroom. We got that, I, I got IBS. I think you too, you do, you have that too, right? Man. That's something we don't talk about. <laughs> yeah, Lance. It's a shitty, it's a shitty subject. Yeah. Uh, continuing on. Man. Um, so, we'll continue about more about benefits when you talk when about. get into the military. But before you it's do your own shitty, everything it's else, a shitty subject. make sure you research everything before your recruiter signs you out. Because a lot of times recruiters will lie to you and and they will screw you over when you when you, when you thought you got the benefits or not. One main benefit I got screwed over was the, the loan repayment program when you get in the military. And now I now and found out he told me that you we can't get it, it's not out there, but it actually is out there. If you have a student loan debt you can get a loan repayment program, and it is out there. They're just there to, to get as much number as you, as much number as their quota as they can do per month, so they will not get ridiculed by anyone else. And also, if you have 32 to 32 credits or, or more, you will have an E3 pay rate instead of an E1 a pay rate, and the pay is up and down because usually they pay you a single rate for a person that's single. And they'll give you a dorm and everything else. You don't worry about housing or electrical stuff. You know, stuff like that for food. You get defect. I, I was in the dorm for a while, especially Delaware and Dover. I was actually. There was a QB shower. I was in tech school in Shepherd Air Force Base in Texas. I've never lived in a dorm. Yeah. I've always they, lived in places with community showers and stuff. I didn't go, you're, yours is called Barrack, right? We call ourselves a dorm. <laughs> yeah, we stayed in the barracks and they were rough. Yeah, you told me a bunch. <laughs> Everybody says, has horrible stories about basic training. I don't. I had a great time. Yeah, we stayed in the barracks and they were rough. Because, man. Everybody says has horrible stories about basic training. I don't. I had a great time. I was already focused towards the military. I'm a military brat myself. Uh, my brothers, two of my bro two of my three four brothers are military. I don't talk about their service. Before you get in, I don't research. I just talk you know they serve. Um, what else? Before you join the military. What were we talking about? Know exactly like Lance is saying. Read up on everything. Know exactly what you want. Oh. Stand firm. Very important. Before you join the military. When you join the military. Know exactly like Lance is saying. Read up on everything. Know exactly what you want. Stand firm. But know this, when you join the military, your primary goal has to be the protection of this country. If you go in the military with any other thoughts, like I'm just going to use the military, they're never going to send me anywhere, blah, 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 you're going to be a bad service member, and you're probably going to be tossed out. Um, Right. <laughs> I think you learned that very You're quick. You're not lying, buddy. You learned that very quick first no, day of boot camp. Um, <laughs> it's very important that you have that mindset. Yeah. That they changed it around I'm now. Boot camp. The, the man. They have we are all branches now. On the weekend, they get their thing. phones out. I'm like, really? And there, I think uh, there's a lot of controversy, especially in the Air Force anymore. side in uh, Lackland Air Force Base. That's where you're going to do what your basic yeah. training at in Lackland. Uh, For the Air Force. Yeah, not the Army. Army is in the swamp somewhere in the south. <laughs> uh, we're pretty much would be the easiest uh, boot camp. For the I Air Force. Say. I have all the horror stories here from Marines and, Air, uh, and the Army. Uh, I don't know about the Navy. I heard Navy, you got to be very good. Uh, what, tolerance, uh, endurance with swimming and everything else? I know swimming is one of the... Uh, 
the 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 uh, the, the thing they got it passed too, right? You see, you have to break the. They may do similar. You have to break the idea that one's better than the other and all that. It's really neat. The, the United States military is built up of different branches because they do different things. They may do similar things, but they all have their own specialty. Marines, uh, Navy SEALs, stuff like that. They're an amphibious unit. Amphibious, which means any, anywhere near the water, they're there. They're the ones that pull off these high, highly dangerous missions and stuff. Then you have people, other special groups like the Rangers, okay? The Rangers are a complete assault group. They do something that special forces doesn't do. They kill indiscriminately. That is their mission. You drop them in a city and tell them to grab something, everybody's going to die. Nobody's walking out of there unless you're a soldier, an army, a military soldier. Um, our specialty so, is And then you have the Air Force, obviously transportation, flight operations, tactical operations. Then they have the Air Force. Um, we call them not PJs. special police. Security, security forces. Yeah, PJ. Security yeah, they're forces called. What are they called? Police. They're not paratroopers. Yeah. No, yeah. but their name yeah. is. PJs. Yeah. They are awesome. They do recovery. Their name. They do all kinds of neat stuff. Security forces. PJ. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, PJs. Uh, they are awesome. They do recovery. They do all kinds of neat stuff. I wouldn't mess with them because we all go through similar schools. There's usually the arm. The military is made up of something called uh, USA, JSOC, United States Special Opera Joint Special Operations. Special Forces is going to be there. You know, Marine. That one of these branches. They're their primary, their primary um, tactical groups, like the Rangers, and you know, special forces is going to be there. You know, Marine Recon, uh, Navy SEALs, Air Force SPs, or not SPs, but PJs. Everyone there for a tactical mission, and they operate together. Example: when they went in to kill. Uh, was it Bin Laden? Or whatever. I have memory issues. Anyway, it was one of them assholes. Um, the Rangers took them and flew them in. And the Navy SEALs completed the mission. Now, it's really neat to watch everybody do their unique thing. Because... If you're in the military and you're in one of these special units, you know that it takes everybody to do their job and do it well. Where you're strong, I may be weak. Where I'm strong, you may be weak. So we have to complement each other and do what we do. You know, it's funny. You, you hear about Rangers. You always hear about... Um, D Day, June 6, 1944. Okay, that was um, the the beach of the beaches at Normandy, right? The beaches of Normandy, and they always talk about how all the Marines died and they took the hill and all that. How about? It'll, on the opposite yeah. side of, of that because, island area, because, we lost because, 33 because we rangers both si because climbing we, a 100-foot cliff. 
And also, if you're going to watch history, the back end. watch the No, my numbers may be off and even my dates, from but history channel. it happened. It, like it old. happened. They have made it. It's black and white footage. When they saw That's one of the best uh, um, documentaries you should watch if people are really interested in it. I think you should get some on YouTube as well. Uh, basically, right. detect both sides, one the top, one the bottom. While Britain come from the side, and and uh, um, and they, I mean, they had a, a second tr trench war on the other side, all the way on the other side with Russia, uh, just basically compressing uh, frick, uh, Germany until back to right. back to where it was, until we <laughs> kill Hitler that time, uh, that day, a uh, long time ago. So. Um, what so? What benefits do you think? What's the benefits you get from when coming in, though? So, uh, coming into military, when you need to get out of it. Well, once, once you understand your mission and your primary goal has to be defending your nation, and your secondary goal has to be getting an education or you know stuff like that. Well, once, uh, you, the benefits once you understand your mission and. Fun. Your primary goal of that has to be defending your nation. Oh, yes. And your secondary goal has to be yeah. getting an education hey, or, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, yes. But the benefits of coming into the military, as I just said, one, is yeah. education. That you should always educate yourself. Yeah. The more you can do, the better. The f hey, the freer, the better. So imagine walking away with college loans for hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on your case. You know, with compounding interest and stuff like that. You know, uh, other benefits. If you are a single person, this the military is being young and in the military single is great because it gives you the time to see things that you wouldn't normally see and to do things you wouldn't normally do. Uh, it's really neat. You can go visit like when you're in Italy and Pricenza or wherever and you can go look around and do stuff like that. And you're, you know, you're but free you, to go you, on and move as you, you do. The, and it's, it's actually a lot of fun. In, you have Being in the military, I can't world. talk about that's a benefit from over it as there because well. I never did any of that. But good be careful stuff where like you go because um, a lot of people but, now uh, they're actually now shipping a lot of these uh, first year uh, uh, military people out really quick. Usually, they stay them there for two, three years in the home base, and get them trained and mm -hmm. get disciplined. And a lot of times, when you're short on men, they will be lucky enough to go travel out the world. Like I went to Japan for two years. That was the most best experience of my life. Even though I was drugged up most of the time <laughs> from painkillers. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I saw I saw, memory face chat and I sold you a whole bunch of places around there. It was very great. Um, being but one thing you can get you when you get in, get out is discipline and responsibility. I think those are the two well, main things you get out from the military. That's always good. Because I wasn't really good in college. Uh, before I joined the military, I failed. Uh, I just worked full time, basically, and don't know what to do with myself in my life. Then joined the military, and when I got out, I have discipline, responsibility. I know what to do. Right now, I'm acing all my classes because I'm more focused because I know what how to plan, organize, what my objective and goals are, and 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 overcome and just take it. Just just get what you need to get and, and get what you need to get done. And that's one thing that people get out of the military. Uh, being yes. in there. And you get great haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm out now. I'm balding, so I don't really care what my hair looks like. You're not balding. Yeah, no, you're not balding. Ashley, I, I want yes. to cut, you know, I could get number one and clipper shave everything. You get great Ashley haircuts. Ashley wants to style my hair now, so I got the sideburn wow. and the flat top. Just let me cut it. I'll be nice. Yeah. I know you did. You did my haircut before. Um, no, you're not bald. Dover. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's basically you know you always want to research everything on those things. Uh, one key thing when you get out, uh, if nice. you're I think golf four and up, you have Tricare health benefits along with your VA. 
uh, make sure your TRICARE is not prime because you don't have to pay for it. Whatever the, the TRICARE pays for, for, the VA will pay the rest for it. So you have basically two health insurance. But I don't know what's going to happen with the, the new president. He might take TRICARE away because TRICARE is charging, I believe, a ridiculous amount of money to the government, I believe, even though we have VA. So if you don't make any income, mm. you can get Obamacare is stalled out as well. They don't have to pay for anything. And else. we had yeah, that'll be over. I hope not. Be. Well, good thing my mom's getting and surgery on Tuesday because if, if we didn't have pressure, uh, um, we because we pay like seven hundred eighty-five dollars, and uh, in, instead of paying like over two, three grand for the surgery, so it's it's a big relief. Yeah, but well, that'll be expensive. over. Because I'm because even though. She used to use a tax return from last year. They don't make any income right now, so I gotta look into it. It's gonna be weird having that uh, thing appeal instead of making free healthcare for everyone. That make life a lot easier. Just pay a little bit more taxes. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get. Me neither. Well, you, well, you said that the uh, VA um, a couple years ago. Uh, uh, legalized marijuana for veterans use yes they did yeah um, I just I don't know I don't, I don't want to get into about it but pretty soon they'll be able to prescribe yeah and that's across the country look it up guys um, it, yes I, they I did I don't remember when it passed um, but, you are now able to talk to your Doctors about it. Pretty soon they'll be able to prescribe. Yeah, we'll put the article down below. across the country. Oscar has the the article. Look it up, guys. Well. Um, uh, I, I use marijuana. I don't remember when it passed because I have uh, my, back, my lower flexor um, on my back, and I have a it passed, uh, nerve damage. And it's a good thing. Everywhere. I really um, think it is. Pain, a my recreational painkiller pain doesn't help me. I have epidural twice a week, long time. Uh, a lot of opiate, it doesn't really help me. But, but marijuana really helps a lot. So, yeah. I can't say that I use it, but I know a lot of people it really helps. Yeah. So. It's it's basically your preference uh, of the person. Um, I think uh, California already legalized it, so they're getting all the laws in place. I think Delaware already legalized it too, right? I can't say that I use it, but I know a lot of people it really helps. Yeah. Right now it's decriminalized in Delaware, which means you can carry up to an ounce on your person and walk away with like an eighty dollar fine or something. Uh -huh. loss, loss of yeah, Delaware, it's up for referendum. Yeah. It's up. It's actually up right now. Uh, uh for recreational yeah. use. Right now it's decriminalized in Delaware. Yeah. Which means you can carry up to an ounce on your person and walk away with like an eighty dollar fine or something. Recreational. And lost yeah. and lost a year. We're still stuff. getting the laws over here done. It's, even though it's legalized for immigration use, we're still getting done you, here in California. You can think you can only do um, that once. But also waiting for charged. that um, the spew about. But they're gonna. The president's going to amend the laws the VA to make it hopefully you know recreational. Boost it up. I don't think that's going to happen at all either. <laughs> Put it this way, I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah. We usually we'll probably do it at the um, a lot of times when there's programs for the v veterans, we always get pushed last. And we don't mind doing that, but make sure that we live a little bit comfortably. You know, we don't have to, you know, worry about a lot of other things. That's why the Put state does way. a lot of stuff as well. I wouldn't bet on it. I think it. the federal level, they should make all broad across, make sure all veterans are taken care of no matter what the cost is. So, right. so that's why every state, your benefits is different. Okay. Because I use Cal for the house for getting me a house, I'm using going through Cal Vet, and uh, they go by percentages, and I'm still working on them with that. Because I want to get the house, then uh, right. I finish school, I want to move to Delaware, 
and then get again in our house and just rent the ones here. Mm, okay. For probably, a, uh, probably for a, another veteran to live in for very cheap. Yeah, I'm. I'm really glad they at least got the uh, housing under control in Delaware. Yeah. If it's only for a limited time. I mean, what happens when that runs out? When HUD bash runs out? Yeah. Well, they don't remove it. Was, it. it was only to solve a, a temporary. Yeah. Band-aid. I'm I'm really glad they at least got the the uh, housing under control in Delaware, even if it's only for a limited time. I mean, what happens when that runs out? When HUD bash runs out? Four hundred percent disability. It was it was only to solve a a temporary. It was a temporary band aid. Utility, clothing, uh, you know, base and gas for your car, your your your, your insurance payment, stuff like that. It's, It's not really affordable at all. That's why I'm going to what uh, use my GI bill so I can get the, the other other chunk of it in so I can take care of the rest of the family. So I have, I'm taking care of four people right now with just two, just me and my wife together. But I'm gonna try to have my mom and my stepdad into my VA so I get a little more of a, a little more into the into the disability money so they don't, so they can be taken care of because they're getting pretty old and they can't really work anymore. Wow. Oh. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. And I hope you do it well. <laughs> no, not really. But uh, one thing I did want to talk about, not to change the subject, was Delaware has something very interesting. It's called Veterans Court. Yeah. It's Superior Court for Veterans. Well, wow. do what you gotta do. You and I hope you do it well. <laughs> no, not really. But uh, one thing I did want to talk about, not to change the subject. Was Delaware has something very interesting. It's called Veterans Court. It's Superior Court for Veterans. You can apply to go there once you have been locked up. You can automatically request to get transferred your case to get transferred to Veterans Court. And what that does is it keeps it from becoming a felony. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's a second chance program for the veterans. It's really awesome. I'm a yeah. court mentor. So oh, I'm going to find one somewhere. of the veterans that are in trouble. And I mentor them and make sure they make all their appointments and stuff so they can graduate to the court. The court's not a permanent thing. We'll it's it to get you rehabilitated and get you all the proper medical <laughs> care and stuff. Yeah. Oh, so, five. Can talk more about, about military VA. Five I'm working with. So, so let's talk about okay, yeah. crack. So, yeah, I have about <laughs> five mentees, four or five, nope. something like that. No, nope. if I want crack, I, go, I, if I want I'm crack. About, I'm, talking, I'm talking about a proctologist. <laughs> I think you mean Vicodin, uh, not Scordon stuff like that. Let's talk about. I'm at the 500 pound dude with his pants crack. hanging out past his ass. Now I'm not making fun of a 500 pound dude. Oh, and I'm talking, I'm talking about, I'm talking, I'm talking about a proctologist kind of crack. Nobody wants to see that. Oh well, man. <laughs> no, I'm at the 500 pound dude no. with his pants so, hanging down past his ass. So this is going to be the end of the now, second portion I'm of the podcast. I'm not making fun of a 500 pound and, dude. Um, not like that. Uh, if you have anything to add, Oscar? Damn it, put some more fabric on. Uh, and then uh, me and Oscar wish you a yet. great day. Please subscribe, thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment if you want more of the podcast information. Thank you, and have a great day. In a minute. Yeah. Uh, stop. No, sir. In a minute. In a minute.